Hello and God bless. Please smash the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. In my last video about this series, the Ahmadi Dad, the Islamic Night series, you have seen in part one how I exposed the liar and deceiver Mr. Ahmadi Dad, the Muslim apologist of his time 35 years ago. In part one, you have seen us going to the Islamic sources where Ahmadi Dad deceived his crowd, his audience, and we went, also went to the Bible to show you how Ahmadi Dad was lying about the Bible using all kind of deceptive tactics to fit his agenda, his deceptive agenda to spread Islam to basically get as many souls into Islam by lying and deceiving. So in this part two, we will continue this series. So if you like this video, please smash the like button and let us start part two. Of miracles. I have read to you a verse from the Holy Quran. Abdul, there is no such thing called the Holy Quran. The Quran in Islam is unholy. Yes, you heard it correctly. The Quran in Arabic is called Al Quran Al Karim, the noble Quran. Let me pray for you a video from a Sunni Sheikh who will rebuke and destroy. Ahmadidat, when Ahmadidat said the Quran is holy. No, there is no such thing called holy prophet or holy Quran. Let me play the video for you. No such thing as holy Quran. You will not, holy in Arabic means muqaddas. Muqaddas. Have you ever came across an ayah in the book of Allah where Allah says Al Quran al Muqaddas? Ever came in a narration? No. And as mentioned before, there's no such thing as Holy Quran. We don't have anything in Islam called Holy Quran. In Christianity, you have Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Ghost, Holy Bible. But in Islam, we don't have Holy Prophet, Holy Quran, and the Holy other things. Have you heard it? There is no such thing called Holy Quran. There is no such thing called Holy Prophet. So, Mr. Ahmadidad, you're a liar and a deceiver. You're a liar and a deceiver. A verse from the Holy Quran. A verse from the Holy Quran. A verse from the Holy Quran. The Holy Prophet Muhammad. The Holy Prophet Muhammad. The Holy Prophet Muhammad. The enemies of Islam, they agree that this is the book that Muhammad left. Friends and four alike, they say, this is the book that Muhammad left. But they say that this is not Allah's kalam. This is Muhammad's cleverness. Very clever man. So we say, look, he was an ummi, an unlearned person. Is it true that Muhammad was an unlearned person? Let us investigate this lie. I'm going to show you that the Muslims, like this deceiver, this liar, Mr. Ahmadidad, they've lied to themselves, they have deceived themselves for the last 1400 years, and we're going to show you that Muhammad was not Ummi, he was not unlettered, as they say. We're going to show you that Muhammad could actually read and write very well. The Muslims have lied to us for the last 1400 years. Not did they only lie to us, but they have also lied to themselves. They have made themselves victims of this satanic cult called Islam. And today we're going to show you that. If we go to the story of Muhammad in the cave, inside the cave, when a so-called creature called Jibreel, the angel, 
Jibreel, we know it was a demon, but Muslims claim that it was an angel. So Jibreel says to Muhammad, Iqra, read. And Muhammad says, Ma ana biqari, I cannot read. Then Jibreel starts to choke Muhammad and he says, Read, Iqra. And then again Muhammad says, Ma ana biqari. And he repeat, uh, repeat this problem with him, choking him, over and over three times. And again Muhammad says, I cannot read. So imagine if it was a donkey and Allah has the power so called in Islam he would have led the donkey read I know right I mean if Allah claims to be God he should have led Muhammad read so three times Muhammad says I cannot read so did Muhammad mean that he actually could not read that he was illiterate or did he mean I cannot read because there is no thing to read from. There is no paper to read from. And I can prove to you that Muhammad meant the last option. He could not read because there was simply nothing handed or given to him to read. Muhammad was not illiterate and I'm going to prove that to you today. So if we go to chapter 7, Ayah 157 from Surah Al-A'raf. Chapter 7, I have 157. It says, Al Rasula al Nabiya al Ummiya, the unlettered, illiterate prophet. So if you read this, you would think, hey, this means automatically Muhammad is illiterate. He could not read and write. But no, illiterate in Arabic can have more than one meaning. It can mean the following. Like I said, the word Ummi, singular, can have three meanings in Arabic. Someone who is illiterate, someone who is part of a nation, and someone who does not know the scripture of God or he did not receive the scripture of God. Basically, spiritually dead person who does not know who God is, he didn't receive anything from God. And we are going to prove to you that illiterate in the Quran means someone like Muhammad who did not receive the scripture of God. We Christians and Jews are called people of the book, people of the scripture. Why? Because we received the scripture of God. This is why we are not spiritually illiterate, right? We are not Ummi. We are not Ummiyun. We are not spiritually dead. We have the book of God, the Bible, right? We have the Torah, we have the Injil. So let me prove to you how the last option, option three, is the correct one in the Quran. Let us go to the Quran. Now in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah 78, it says the following. وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّيُونَ Unlettered ones. لا يعلمون الكتابة لا يعلمون الكتابة أميون plural of أمي We are illiterates basically. But not illiterate because we cannot read and write. No, because it says among them are unlettered ones who do not know the scripture except in wishful thinking, but they are only assuming. So here it says, they have the scripture, but they don't know what the scripture means. They don't understand the scripture. This is why they are called unlettered ones. Right? They are spiritually dead. They have no clue. They do have the scripture in their hands, but they are only assuming. Right? Hence, Ummiyun. Ummi, this is plural, Ummi is singular, Ummi, right? So Muhammad is spiritually dead because he did not have the book of God yet. Hence, Ummiya, unlettered, illiterate. So he was spiritually dead 
This is why he was called the unlettered prophet. Right? And now let us go to the hadith to prove to you that Muhammad could write and read very well. Let us go to Sahih al Bukhari. So if we go to sunnah.com, in this hadith, Sahih al Bukhari, hadith number 114, 114, we can read Ibn Abbas said, when the ailment of the Prophet became worse, he said, Muhammad said, Bring for me writing paper and I will write for you a statement which will you will not go astray. So Muhammad asked for paper, writing paper, to write something down. So as you see, Muhammad could write very well. He was not illiterate as the Muslims have claimed. Actually illiterate. No. He could write and read Arabic very well. Did you see that? So Muslims, they will say, no, no, it doesn't mean that he could actually write. They will, he asked for paper so that they will dictate what he says. No. No, no, no. He says, I will write for you. So Muslims, you cannot play this game. I will write for you a statement. He is the one who is going to write. So Muslims, we are immune for your lies. So as you see, people so as you see Muhammad was called Ummi because he did not receive the scripture of God yet and here it means that Muhammad could not read because there was nothing on paper for him presented to read from so Muslims stop lying except that Muhammad could write and read very well. He simply did not have the scripture yet from God to be called like us, the Jews and the Christians, the people of the book. We are called people of the book because we did have the scripture of God Almighty, the Jews and the Christians. It was an ummi. An unlearned person. So no, Muhammad could write and read very well and we proved it for you. So Mr. Ahmadidat, you have been deceived and you continue using the deception after 35 years. Even after your death, Muslims believe that Muhammad was illiterate. He was not illiterate, he could read and write very well, as we proved it to you. You know, Muslims keep using these lies to deceive themselves, but in 2019, we Christians can read and we can uncover the hidden secrets in the Islamic sources. Muslims, you have been deceived. Ahmadidat is deceived and he deceived himself and his audience 35 years ago. So let us continue, guys. So you see, this Ummi, if he did this work, he gives you 99. He said, well, you see, Muhammad was a genius. Well, he is talking about the so-called unlettered prophet that we exposed. He's saying that Muhammad gave in the Quran 99 names. You heard him, right? 99 names. Let me play it again. I said, you see, this Ummi, if he did this work, he gives you 99. 99 names of Allah. Well, we challenged Muslims. We have challenged Muslims to show us all the 99 names as Muhammad claimed that Allah has 99 names, we have challenged Muslims to show us the 99 names inside the Quran. Until now, they cannot show us the 99 names of Allah. They are simply not in the Quran. There are 26 names missing. Yes, you heard it correctly. 26 names of the so-called 99 names of Allah 
are missing in the Quran. So Mr. Ahmadidat, you have no clue what you're talking about. We have challenged you Muslims. Show us the all 99 names of Allah in the Quran. You cannot. 26 are missing. So Mr. Ahmadidat, you are a clueless deceiver. That's what you are. I challenge him and I challenge, oh it is dead. I challenge the biggest sheikh now today in 2019 to show us all the 99 names inside the Quran. If you can show us, if you can show us that all the Christians will convert to Islam. That's this challenge. Show us all the 99 names in the Quran. If you can show us, I will say the Shahada today. What about that? I will say the Shahada today. So let me give you an example. One of the 99 names that is not in the Quran. One of the 99 names according to Muslims of Allah is Al-Rashid. Al-Rashid. Which means the rightly guided. Al-Rashid. The rightly guided. But it's not in the Quran. It's not in the Quran. Unfortunately. It's missing. Why it's missing? Muslims claim this is his name. Muslims claim this is his name. Which is false. It's not in chapter 72, ayah 10. It says, Rashada, Rashada, a right path. Al Rashid is not the same meaning as Rashada, right? A right path, a right path. According to Google Translation, it should have been Al Rashid, the rightly guided. You see the difference between these two words, Al Rashid and Rashada. So it's not there. And there are many names of Allah missing in the Quran. And there is a hadith by a Tirmidhi, which is a weak hadith mentioning all the 99 names. A weak hadith, guys, mentioning the 99 names, which are not found in the Quran. Last time we checked, Muslims always say to us, we don't accept weak hadith, right? Let me show you that it's a weak hadith. And like I said, 26 names are not in the Quran. And we gave you the example of Al-Rashid. But the Quran says Rashada. Let me go and show you the hadith. This is the hadith of Jamat Tirmidhi. Hadith number 3507. 3507. It says grade dive, and here you can find all the 99 names of Allah Al Rashid, the one that I described, right? The guide. This is even a false translation. But anyway, as you see, it says indeed Allah has 99 names, 100 less one, right? So this is a weak hadith. So the 99 names of Allah is based on a weak hadith, the Aif hadith. Right, so this name is not in the Quran as we showed you, and there are many names like this that are not in the Quran. There are actually a lot of them not in the Quran, and we counted them, we came to 26. You see, here's a list Al Nafi is not in the Quran, Al Mani. Is not in the Quran and a lot of them you see it's not there it's not there so Mr. Ahmadi dad you are nothing but a liar and a deceiver you are nothing but a liar and deceiver and you base your faith on a Daif hadith right and as we showed you Al Rashid is not in the Quran So Muslims, you have been deceived, you have been lied to, like the likes of Ahmadi died, the deceiver and the liar. The funny thing is that it says you will enter paradise, you read it, whoever counts them shall enter paradise, 
you will enter paradise if you count the 99 names. But how are you going to count the 99 names if they are not in the Quran and this is a wake hadith? Great daif, weak hadith. So they are not in the Quran, the names, but if you count them, you will enter paradise. The one who wrote this, the one who said that if you count the 99 names of the Quran was a complete certified donkey. How are you going to count the 99 names if they are not in the Quran? And this is a weak daif. Mr. Ahmadidat and the likes of Ahmadidat, you are nothing but certified donkeys. You are liars and deceivers and you have deceived an Islamic nation. A nation of illiteracy. They don't read, they don't understand that Islam is false. And is based, as you see in front of you, based on lies and deception. How can you count the 99 names of Allah and you will enter Jannah? But you can't count them because they are not there. It's not in the Quran. They are not in the Quran, all of them. As we explained and show you and prove to you. So, Mr. Ahmadi Dad, you have been spanked. You have been exposed and you have been served. Let us continue, guys. Solomon chapter 5 verse 16 the word Muhammadim is Muhammad im im I am im im is a plural of respect no it's not plural of respect Mr. Abdul else we would have called Abraham im Moshe im that's not how we call them so get it out of your head that Muhammad is mentioned by name in the Torah and in the Injil because remember the Quran in chapter 7 ayah 157 says you can find the unlettered prophet in the Torah and in the Injil it's not in Song of Solomon 516 Song of Songs 516 because it's not part of the Torah it's not part of the Injil, Abdul, the first five books are called the Torah that were written by Moses. But Song of Songs 516 is not in the Torah or in the Injil. So Mr. Abdul Ahmadidat, you have no clue what you're talking about. You have no clue about your Quran and you have no clue what this verse song of songs 516 means it is between a husband and his wife that's what the story is about a wife is telling beautiful things about her husband abdul he's altogether lovely so the wife is describing her husband that he's altogether lovely why want you to force muhammad inside the story of a man and his wife who are in love you want to have them a threesome god forbid mr ahmed Idad, you're nothing but a liar and a deceiver and you have no clue that your quran is clearly saying that you can find the unlettered prophet who you claim that is muhammad is in chapter 7 ayah 157 let me show you this is chapter 7, Ayah 157. It says, read with me, Those who follow the messenger, that Muslims claim is Muhammad, the unlettered prophet, whom they find written in what they have of the Torah and the Gospel. Where? In the Torah and the Gospel. Is Song of Songs 516 mentioned here? No. It is talking about the Torah and the Gospel. So according to the Quran, if you want to find Muhammad, you should not go to this book of Song of Songs, chapter 516. No, you should go to the first five books of Moses, which is the Torah or in the Gospel. 
So, Mr. Ahmadidat, you want to force the name Muhammad inside a book that is not mentioned by your prophet. So, Muslims, if you truly want to find Muhammad, you only go to the Torah and the Gospel. So, first, Mr. Ahmadidat, learn your Quran, then try to force Muhammad inside another book right you have no clue what you're talking about you're a scumbag you're a liar and a deceiver so again you've been exposed and served for everyone to see and everyone is here tonight witnessing that Muhammad is nothing but a liar and deceiver and you are a follower of a liar and a deceiver so you automatically you're going to use his lies and deception, Mr. Ahmadida. Mr. Liar and Deceiver. Guys, I mentioned Song of Song 516 in part 1. But I wanted to show you that even according to the Quran, we can expose this filthy liar, Ahmadida, from chapter 7, ayah 157. Because if he truly knew his own Quran, he should have never ever went to Song of Songs 516. He should have gone to the Torah. He should have gone to the Gospel. Right? Filthy, lying, scumbag. You have been served and you have been exposed again. Right? Muslims, please wake up. Please wake up. You see, your hero was nothing but a liar and a deceiver. Leave this satanic cult called Islam. And accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You will not be saved when you follow such deceptive, lying heroes in Islam, like this fake scammer, this scammer, Mr. Ahmadida. You see how easy it is to expose this liar? We have exposed him from the Quran. We have exposed him from the, from, uh, from the Islamic teaching. And we also exposed him again about the Bible. And I can keep doing this all day as you see we just use only uh, two lectures right the first lecture that I used that he gave he made three mistakes and now as you see this was from a different lecture about the song of songs he lied about it he has no shame and as we showed you in part one of this series he was trying to force Muhammad while he was not even listening to his own Quran. He was forcing Muhammad in the book of Song of Songs. Which is talking about two people who are in love. And you want to force Muhammad into that? That's evil man. You want to force Muhammad between a wife who is in love with her husband. Saying beautiful things about her husband. You want to force him inside that story? Why? And like we said, there are at least 12 verses in the Bible mentioning Mahmadim. Right? And we showed you that if you are going to other verses like Isaiah 66, if I'm not mistaken, you could see that Muhammad will be destroyed if that's Muhammad. He would be laid as ashes. He would be destroyed, laid to waste. Right, Isaiah 66. And if you go to Ezekiel and you want to call that Muhammad in Ezekiel, it is talking again about Mahmadim. Here again, his wife, the wife of Ezekiel, is pleasant to his eyes. Right? So, are you telling us that Muhammad is a gay? Is gay? Well, keep doing that, Muslims. Keep doing that. Unfortunately, Ahmed Didad is not here to keep spanking him. But we are showing you in this part too that Ahmed Didad was nothing but a liar and a deceiver. So come back to Jesus. Glory to his name because we showed you today that your hero was nothing but a fake and a scammer. Accept Jesus Christ and leave Islam. Jesus is Lord. And Islam is false. Thank you for watching and God bless.